Peterson yeah. handicap and Foistar, another favourite, is running second at this stage. He keeps coming in the straight to wear down the leader, Mr. Godson, and Jack's battling on well for third. Almost an Indian file as they travel around the corner, and Mr. Godson by nearly two lengths Foistan, Vane Carrioy's rider, heading out towards the centre of the track, and then Jack's a noble connection. Around the turn for home, Mr. Godson railing well. He straightens up a length and three quarters Foistan. Vane Carrioy not doing enough at the moment. He's been passed by Jack's. Foistan trying hard to pick up Mr. Godson as they race inside the 200, two and a half to Jax. Mr. Godson still holds the lead. Foistan's cutting him down now. Foistan quickly heads off. Mr. Godson clear of Jax and Foistan. Class is telling and away he goes. Foistan wins at a length. Yes, Foistan uh, is yet another to uh, come north uh, with the, in the Smith camp this week and uh, he'll probably uh, run in the Lightning Handicap here on May the 18th. He's going out after Mr Godson. It took him some time to collar the leader, but from this point home, Wayne Harris goes for the whip here and Foistan draws away. Uh, Mr Godson getting very tired and Jack's coming on uh, nicely for third. His effort uh, pretty good and he might be uh, worth following also. But Foistan a convincing win. The seventh went to zoning a grey and about sixth place. A little awkwardly placed at this stage. Gets a nice run through after they straighten. Goes on to defeat Hale and Shine by Nick. And Shine quickly races to a clear cut lead from Riverfront. Zephyr tie in third position, followed by Zoning looking for an out. Silver Lay dropping off, and so too is Guria. Zephyr tie getting a beautiful split. He goes to the lead. Zoning's the immediate challenger, and Hale and Shine is sticking on too. Now Zoning and Hale and Shine are doing better than Zephyr tie with Zoning drawing a half length clear on Hale and Shine, refusing to give in. But the grey Zoning, he's found his form today, and he's coming away from Hale and Shine in third place muffler but zoning gets the prize zoning from Hale and Shine yes uh, zoning scoring pretty well that's him coming back to stage this is the, the final uh, event went to Interhotes the leader uh, Parnassus had every chance in the straight but the leader much too good Interhotes they're onto the corner at the 450 Interhotes increasing his lead to nearly a length on accuracy Parnassus third and keeping him hemmed away Prince Vanquish and then Resource and Pulsane and Mays via the Cape as they come around the corner Interhotes accelerating the rider heading three or four off the inside right Parnassus the immediate challenger but he's still two lengths from Interhotes and then Accuracy followed by Prince Vanquish and Pulsane but Interhotes looks the goods at the 100 metres he's in absolutely no danger Interhotes the further he goes the further he's increasing his margin over Parnassus and Pulsane and Interhotes wins it easily comfortable victory there in the uh, final event to Interhotes now hopefully we'll have a look at the uh, Warwick Farm TAB information well done three and eight the double 48 90 the uh, dividend one <laughs> three and eight 94 dollars don't blink and the extra double uh, three and three paid ten dollars ninety beautifully handled Mark. this one uh, a little bit rough but uh, managed to regain his composure and hold off uh, Zamenhof the favorite who had his chance oh nice one <laughs> then came my hutch it might be a bye bye diamond dropping out from Quobite but this leader's not going badly, Sir Agrafo. He led a length and a half to the orchardist, and Zamenhof's rider had to go for the whip as they turned for home. Sir Agrafo, the leader, coming to the last. He's a length in front of the orchardist and Zamenhof. Oh, he tried to run off at it. Ran out badly, landed in front. Zamenhof under the whip, getting up on the inside, but not going well enough. And Sir Agrafo's hanging onto the lead. In fact, he's coming away from Zamenhof now. And Sir Agrafo goes on to win by about three lengths to Zamenhof. Four lengths away, third, the orchardist. Poke No Pearl had a huge lead at the home turn in the second event, getting a bit weary at the finish, but managed to hold off Kenny Lass by three quarters of a length. He's gone for the whip on it. In second placing still Sabanella, followed by Kenny Lass, the leader starting to tire a bit now. They were followed further back, Sovereigna. Poke No Pearl, three in front, getting very weary, a hundred to go. Kenny Lass wearing it down on the outside. Will the post be too close? It's Poke No Pearl just in front, it'll win. Poke No Pearl, about three parts of a length to Kenny Lass. Third was Sabanella. Mighty scandal there, landed some nice bets Lincoln when he ran on strongly to grab the lead in the uh, third event to defeat King's Message. The then inspected an archipelago, loaded cannons and King's Message, the stable mate, swept to the lead in the straight with the Proquillo out very wide and they were followed by Mighty Amigo getting a run at the 300 and King's Message has got away. King's Message tackled now by Mighty Amigo, Mighty Scandal and Braquillo out wide, loaded cannons is gone with about 150 to go now. Mighty Scandal gets its head in front of King's Message and Mighty Scandal wins at a half length to King's Message. Braquillo still ran third about three lengths away. An all the way victory to Italian to verdict in the Gipsland handicap, 2400 metres, is uh, clear at this stage and always in control. 
Into the straight, Italian verdict, two lengths to Bon Brummel under the whip. Showbag the outside, Zafiro starting to come home, but looks to be too late at the moment. And Italian verdict, well clear, 200 to go. Two and a half lengths to Bon Brummel battling on, and then came Showbag and Zafiro. But Italian verdict's going to be untroubled. He's well clear near the line, and Italian verdict will go on and win about two and a half lengths to Bon Brummel. Zafiro got up for third. Kentish was the, the leader turn, at the Kentish home turn in the fifth event, but he wobbled Axel away from the inside, and along came Knight Reading. of Avon right yes, through on the fence to uh, leading, score by a half length. Note and Barley Hunter down the outside. Kentish led into the straight. Taxel got out to go after him now. Knight of Avon getting a run. Barley Hunter struggling. It's Kentish clear, though, with 150 to go. Knight of Avon getting up along the inside rail. And then came Taxel. Knight of Avon getting to Kentish. Kentish and Knight of Avon fighting it out. There's nothing in it. Kentish in front, but Knight of Avon's going home best. And with a beautiful rails run, Knight of Avon won at a half length to Kentish. Lord Nisku might have got up for third. Sixth was the welter handicap, a nine-year-old Ranger's son Sanford swept around them the coming to the turn the outside, and went on to Ranger's score from Ben Criado. Dreams got lost for the moment on the inside from Coram Gala Mascot and then Tantu Soldier Shweek. Old Ranger's son swept to the lead in the straight now from Ben Criado. Ripper's Dreams going for a rails run and they're followed by Gala Mascot, but the old Ranger's in front of the 200. He's drawn a length clear of Ben Criado, Gala Mascot, and then came Ripper's Dream, but with 100 to go, and age shall not weary them. Old Rangers comes away, and he's going to win easily. Scores by a length and a half to Ben Criado. Corum got up for third. My Dulcinea on the uh, outside in the blinkers runs on solidly to defeat uh, Mai Yakoi, who got clear and looked a threat just after they straight. Mai Yakoi into the straight and used the spaces, taken the lead narrowly from Gold Omen. It's hanging though, a length away. My Dulcinea running on from Mai Yakoi, getting out, used the space, can't find much. And Mai Dulcinea has grabbed it on the outside and taken the lead, and Mai Yakoi going with it. But Mai Dulcinea in front of Mai Yakoi near the line, and Mai Dulcinea goes on to win. A half length to Mai Yakoi. Three lengths away third, used the space from Caramilla. A rattling they finish by Glenn Morriston had the bookies cheering in the final event. Successful at 40 to 1. Glenn Morriston, have a look at this for a finishing boost. Ahead of the others from Check the Deck and Sheer Style. They've run very wide on the turn where Pluvied sneaked away, but Richborg's now got the run. Warlike's got an inside run, finally turns hanging badly. And then Greystoke. Richborg is getting to this one, uh, Pluvied, but Pluvied finding plenty. Check the Deck trying to get a run. It's going better than anything. With 100 to go, Check the Deck forcing through. Tackles Pluvied. Here's Glenn Morriston flying. He'll beat the a lot. Glenn Morriston got up out wide and he's beaten. Check the deck and blue beat. Came home faster than Pat Welsh at five to ten. Uh, that's the uh, <laughs> Melbourne meeting yesterday. We'll have a look at the uh, TAB information on Caulfield. Five and five, the double, $121.50. The treble, two, five and five, six, sixty-six dollars and thirty cents. And one and ten, a nice extra double dividend, one hundred and eighty-seven dollars eighty. That's how we <laughs> Should have got Bob to do this segment. The 2,000 guineas. <laughs> 2,000 guineas from Newmarket. Uh, Lester Pickett successful there. And also the uh, Kentucky Derby. But we'll go straight up on the uh, 2,000 guineas. It went to Pickett on the uh, 5 to 4 on favourite Shadid. Two are ahead of Supreme Leader. It's a driving finish and Shadid is holding Bairn. Shadid by half a length from Bairn with Supreme Leader in third place. On the line, Shadid wins all out. Bairn is a net behind. Supreme Leader is third, and in comes Basson Tweed behind Basson Tweed was Royal Harmony. In probably his last season, uh, Piggott notched his 29th classic success there on Shadid and his fourth in the uh, 2000 Guineas. While at uh, Kentucky, Louisville, the uh, Kentucky Derby went to Spender Buck, who led throughout wire to wire. Making for the lead from the outside, that's Spender Buck. General Prince is off slowly on the inside, Chiefs Clown moves into second up from the outside on Kulur runs a third from the rail Irish fighter is a fourth then up from the outside Skywalker fifth ahead eternal prince sixth they're moving for the first turn and spend the buck has the lead by a length and a half chiefs crown second on the outside Irish fighter third ahead on Kulur fourth ahead eternal prince fifth a length and a half Skywalker sixth Roman rule is seventh thanks prospect eighth by a Stephen's Odyssey. And down the back stretch, spend a buck as 
Floyd Roman rule takes a fifth. They're midway through the turn and spin the buck leads by five. Chiefs ground second of length and a half. On the rail tanks prospect is a third. Up from the inside into fourth. That's past the count. They're moving for the stretch. It's spin a buck with a five length lead. Chiefs crown is still second. From the inside that's fast to count third. Stephens Odyssey is gaining ground down along the rail fourth. In the final furlong it's all spin a buck by five. On the inside that's Stephens Odyssey with Chiefs crown and fast to count. Nearing the wire it's spin a buck with the lead. Underwear spin a buck leads wire to wire to win the derby by four maybe five lengths. Stephens Odyssey gets up for second with Chiefs well, no room for excuses for the beaten division there with Spenderbuck, as the commentator said, wire to wire. He certainly broke them up with speed early and went right on with the job in the uh, Kentucky Derby. Doombin yesterday, and the Central Queensland punters were cheering after the opening event when Come On Bill Bird, starting at 7-1, to one, uh, fought on to defeat Road Rouge and Corboy, the favourite, who made up good ground late. Rody Rouge, followed by Corboy, who's back in fourth place, five lengths from the leader. Plimsoll's next on the outside. Citrine pushing through in the middle. General Giuseppe going forward, but trap right off the track. Brave and Trusty next on the inside of Beaufort Park, then Smart Axe and Aspiola's last to the home turn, 450 metres left to go. Morning lift to clear cut leader, a length and a half in front as they straight up come on bell bird in second place roadie rude to the outside running on fairly well they're well clear of core boy and then citrine on the outside come on bell bird loomed up to go to the lead but tackled immediately by roadie rude on the outside they shot away from morning left core boy starting to pick up ground but he's racing erratically it's come on bell bird about three quarters of an eighth in front of roadie rude core boy flying home at the end come on bell bird in front drawing to the line too good for them come on bell bird come on bell bird first tight second and third roadie rude second and those in front of core Boy. Solid performance there by uh, Come On Bellbird, but I thought the effort of the favourite Corboy to get third was very good. He was coming back in distance and he lost ground at a crucial stage in the middle part of the race and he ran on uh, pretty strongly. This is the slow mo inside the 200 metres and it's Come On Bellbird leading from uh, Rody Rouge, but Corboy, the horse in the blue colours, Graham Cleesey going for the whip. The youngster's inclined to just race a little bit erratically for the apprentice, but he really was uh, picking up ground strongly in the last 100 metres. I don't think there's much doubt that if it had been uh, 1,200 metres, he would have uh, fully tested the winner, Come On Bellbird. Second event was the Endeavour graduation. It went to Gavin Duffy tennis on tennis. He's tennis always prominent. He's actually in front at this stage second. and he kicks right away in the straight. Third, fourth, stains are fifth, handy card. Noble Act to midfield on the rails and then Ballyman's boy three wide outside of Yolson Ladd and plain nonsense. In a click is pushing through in the centre, the Magic Cobbler. No vanity now starting a run and Prince Summit's last. To the home turn, 450 metres left to go. Tennis looks to be full of running at the moment. He straightens up almost two in front of Solo Gay. Stains are a length away third, followed by Muta. Duffy's gone for home now on tennis and look at him go. He exploded away from the field. He's four lengths in front. 250 50 metres out. He's riding him hard now. Tennis about four in front. Muted moving up into second place. Yolson Ladd and Ballyman's boy running on strongly. But it's all tennis. Duff goes for the whip on him now. He's got it one. Tennis goes to the post to win it by almost three lengths. Muted second. Ballyman's boy third. Third event was the uh, Chatel Napoleon handicap. A lot of interest uh, was robbed for, of this race when Mr. Merrymaker, the class three-year-old, was scratched uh, following rain. But uh, nevertheless, the winner hoist your own was very, very impressive to defeat Butterfly Prince and Haley's Hope. Pushed along at the moment. Haley's Hope is fourth on the rail. She's travelling okay. She's saving ground on the inside. Hoist your own going through in the middle. Then Cuba's Gold, who's picking up ground. Il Rubino dropped back there, passed by Sweet Reclaim. And then Ripper Risk and own Prince is last. He's gone for home now on Butterfly Prince. He pulls the whip on him and as they straighten up butterfly prince about two lengths in front hoist your own second on the outside then draw the line Haley's hope got chopped out there cuba's goal to the outside running on fairly well butterfly prince the leader stopping hoist your own is finishing gamely on the outside he's going like a winner hoist your own hoist your own moved up on the outside of butterfly prince they're going stride for stride cuba's goal in third place and then Haley's hope running on fairly well but it's all hoist your own at the end and hoist your own push right out wins it by a length and a half butterfly prince second Haley's Hope got third and had no... Prentice uh, Laith Babian, the rider of uh, Hoist Your Own, was subsequently suspended, but fortunately he'll be back in time to ride the Gold Coast four-year-old next start. Gallon Fourth Prentice event was the Bonza Bottle Shops Hart quality, Hart and Princess, Princess Tiber in a handy third spot here third on goes on to score comfortably from moving. Kelly's Pool and Fiery on Embers. On the back of the leader now. She's in a bit of a pocket. Now Fiery Embers is trying to sneak up on the inside of Princess Tiber, followed by Foreign Interest, and last of all is Kelly's Pool. To the home turn, 450 metres out. Gallon Fred, the leader, about a neck in front of Hard Gift. Fiery Embers is now snookered third on the inside. 
Princess Tiber coming away from the rail. She's moving up on the outside of those leaders. And Foreign Interest is joining in pretty strongly. Princess Tiber now sprints to the lead on the outside. She shot away from them. She's a couple of lengths in front. Kelly's pulled into the clear, running on fairly well. Foreign Interest starting to struggle under the big weight. But Princess Tiber is going to be much too good for them in the run home. And push right out. She scores by a couple of lengths. Princess Tiber first. Kelly's pulled second. Fiery Embers third. Princess Tiber and uh, Shane Scriven taking out the Bonza Bottle Shops flying. We'll take a break now and come back and look at the remainder of the Doombin program. Back to sports scene. We're up to race five from Doombin yesterday. It was the Black Douglas Stakes and we're all waiting to see the New Zealander Kingdom Bay. Well, he certainly didn't let us down. A glittering performance. He uh, handled Very the soft fast, conditions perfectly. Ran on powerfully to defeat uh, Phoenix Rising Phoenix and let Rising me tell. And away third on the inside. A length to port in. Two lengths to deal. Then Sabiske. Kingdom Bay now starting a run. Moving forward on the outside. But he's trapped off the track at the moment. Keistador's next on the rails. And then Vita. Supreme Optimist is well back with Crew Air. And Chinui's last. Let me tell. Nicely clear. Running to the home turn. 4.50 out. Let me tell. Will straighten up. Almost four lengths in front of Phoenix Rising. Hard Britain, poured in under pressure, followed by Sabiske and then Kingdom Bay, but let me tell, he's got a long lead as they straighten for home, let me tell about four lengths in front of Port in Sabiske Phoenix Rising, Kingdom Bay to the outside, starting to pick up ground, let me tell, still the leader, 200 metres out Duffy's gone for the whip on him, he's starting to stop, here's Kingdom Bay, the New Zealanders flying on the outside, he races up to them, goes to the lead, Phoenix Rising is coming hard at the end, it's Kingdom Bay in front, close to home and he's right down, scores by a neck Kingdom Bay first, Phoenix Rising second, tight third, Deal flew and is in a fade out. Well, there's no doubt he is a class three-year-old Kingdom Bay. He's got a great record in New Zealand. It looks like he's set for a big winter here in Brisbane. We'll show you the slow motion. This is inside the 200 metres. Let me tell, he did a great job out in front. He's battling on strongly. He's in the green colours on the fence. One out from him is Phoenix Rising, the Melbourne filly, whose effort was very good first time this way of going. But the New Zealander Kingdom Bay down the centre of the track, which incidentally was the uh, better section of the track yesterday. It was very chopped up in close. But Noel Harris didn't push him right to the line. He eased him down and Phoenix Rising was able to get back... Uh, within a neck at the finish. But I thought her effort was very good. I'm sure she's going to pick up a race over the carnival. Sixth event went to Minns. Neil Williams with a flashing finish to defeat at random. And Brazen Hunter trapped three wide. Then one to at random. One to musical John going forward on the outside of Glamorgan Vale. Manley's pride very deep. Ruling story on the rail. Two lengths to Minns. A break of four to the Cowboys home. And Star Halicus last as they pack up approaching the bend. 400 left to go. Subaru taken on by Little Downey. Cruise missile under pressure. He's gone. On, at random into the clear running on and then ruling story as they swing the bend 300 meters left to go little downy on top at random coming after him quickly and then men's running on little downy led at the 150 but at random's coming at him quickly little downy in front at random and now men's on the outside men's will blow them all out men's flying took the lead from at random and men's gets up and wins men's first at random second little downy third Yes, uh, yet another uh, Kiwi Gallop uh, Mins, but at least he's now uh, Queensland owned and trained. That was his first uh, Queensland appearance, and it was a very impressive performance. We'll show you the slow motion. He was well back at the home turn. As we get inside the 200, it's Little Downey over on the fence, at random claiming the leader, and here comes Mins. Neil Williams really going for the whip in vigorous style, and the uh, New Zealand, or former New Zealand three-year-old, picks them up quickly and he was careering away on the line. Considering his New Zealand form uh, appears to be around 1,600 metres, that was a good effort to, uh, to score there over the 1,200. And he looks like he's a three-year-old to follow in the restricted ranks. Seventh event went to Prince Pageant, a good result for the bookies. And uh, showed a sharp form improvement to win. Prince Pageant at this stage in the green and yellow colours, about fifth place. Race to the front now. Grand Thunder showing plenty of dash, moving up three wide to join those leaders. About three lengths to Basic French, followed by El Jadidi, Prince Pageant, then Agro Khan. Bartlett next on the outside, over on the rails, Avson. Three lengths to Swift Balance, then Kite Time. Winning designs last. As they race to the home turn, plenty of speed on. Water Wagon just in front of Amboyna and Grand Thunder three wide. Basic French is beautifully placed fourth just behind the speed. Agro Khan next to the inside of El Jadidi and Prince Pageant to the outside. Into the straight water wagon just in front of Grand Thunder. Amboyna in between them. Basic French got chopped out. Agro Khan to the outside. Prince Pageant coming home strongly. Grand Thunder loomed up. Poked his nose in front. Prince Pageant and Agro Khan coming at Grand Thunder. Grand Thunder, Agro Khan. Prince Pageant the outside. Prince Pageant just in front. Prince Pageant about a neck in front of Grand Thunder as they hit the line. And he's won it. Prince Pageant first, Grand Thunder second, Agro Khan third.
return to form in there by Prince Pageant, much to the glee of the bookies. Final event went to Star Armin, who came from a mile back at the home go, turn. She had a featherweight of 46 kilos, and she really motored home. Play. They're a length and a half clear of Pemichul, who's travelling very strongly in third place, followed by Banshee Arrow, next on the outside, Najinsky's Jewel, Lee Walk on the rails, and then Granite Princess, who's going forward. Length further back to Heine Terry, Toy Card Blue September, Star Armin now starting a run, and then Miss Tobin and Safer. Onto the home turn, 450 metres to go. Madame Briar loomed up on the outside. She's about a neck in front of Larton Bay now. Tamma Jewel going for a run in the middle, followed by Granite Princess on the outside. Then Lee Walk, Toy Khan, Banshee Arrow, Najinsky's Jewel, and Heine Terry to the extreme outside. Madame Briar has taken the lead, 250 metres out. Tamma Jewel's got the run in the middle, coming through pretty quickly. Granite Princess, Banshee Arrow's getting clear, and Star Amon's flying on the extreme outside. Look at her go, Star Amon. She loomed up to them, raced away from them and scores easily. Star Raymond first, Granite Princess second, and Heine Terry, I think, got third. Well, that certainly made amends for a defeat earlier in the day for apprentice Graham Cleesey. Star I'm in with a wet sail from well back at the home turn. A look now at the TAB information. The Doombin yesterday, 4 and 10, the double for $83. The treble, 4, 4 and 10, $360.30. And uh, understandably, a very healthy six-pick Division One pool, $29,801.70. Thank you, Martin. We'll take a break in... Absolutely. ...yesterday, and it's been uh, torrential rain in Sydney for a couple of weeks now, and the conditions still on the heavy side at Rose Hill yesterday. But punters were off on the, uh, on the right tack with the favourite Blazing Mist taking out the opening event. We've got no audio on this uh, tape here, but at the 200 metres, Blazing Miss was well in control. She'd led throughout, and she was a good three to four lengths clear, and she went on to score by four and three quarter lengths. A very impressive performance, this, by uh, Blazing Miss. She's uh, a promising filly by Blazing Saddles. Blazing Miss at uh, two to one, taking out the opening event at Rose Hill yesterday. And it seemed to be a day where the uh, horses racing prominently, certainly at the home turn, were largely successful. That was uh, also the case in the second with Duchess of Alba. Mick Dittman's mount, the grey on the inside. She kicked right away after being challenged in the straight by Rose Diamond. They straighten up. Rose Diamond's coming after Duchess of Alba. Two and a half to Annie Catherine working to third posse and then Miss Lucy. Duchess of Alba's going all right, however. The rider pulls the whip at the moment. She's safely holding Rose Diamond, clear of Annie. Catherine and Duchess of Alba looks in no danger of defeat. A hundred to go, she's got to blitz them. Duchess of Alba careering away from Rose Diamond. Annie Catherine will hold on for third, but Duchess of Alba wins it easily. Three lengths a margin on the line over Rose Diamond. About six lengths further back, third Annie Catherine. It was another all the way win in the third event with Kingdom Road, who's on the inside sharing the lead at this stage, and he kicks on well to beat uh, Imperial Coop. Tropical Prince's third last, second last, Lynn Troll and Young Beaches has had enough. Homeward bound. And Kingdom Road on the inside just leads Black Civic. Third has gained control. Wallara Prince is spotting them a big start. At the 220 and Kingdom Road, a son of Whiskey Road. He's a length and a half. Black Civic and holding him followed by gain control. Inclined to duck in, but it's still Kingdom Road. About two lengths gain control, making no impression. Then comes Imperial Cuivation and Black Civic. But Kingdom Road is going to blitz them. And to the line goes Kingdom Road. About two and a half lengths clear on Imperial Coup. A half head away third wide. Gain control. Then coming the fourth the went to Vari's Ace, who tracked the tearaway leader, Vane Carrier, into the straight, the but uh, finished on far too strongly for the leader. Punishment. And then comes Sky Treasure and Zephyr Ace, straightening up, and Vane Carrier, he's about three lengths, Vari's Ace and Sprightly Knight, two lengths to the challenge at the moment. He's not doing enough, and Vane Carrier's rider Langby goes for the whip. Vari's Ace is responding to the hard riding by Marshall. He's the danger. He looks the winner, Vari's Ace. He races up to Vane Carrier. He quickly gains the upper hand and Vary's ace is kicking away. Second is Vane Carrioy. Good go for third. Zephyr Ace will get it. But it's Vary's ace winning easily. Vane Carrioy second. Stop to a walk. Third, Zephyr Ace. The Grey Belieho earned a trip to, to Brisbane with his effort. Here's the Grey back near last on the fence. Gets a lovely run along the fence and goes on to defeat Double Dandy. ...on Gull Condor, who's travelled well on the run. Here's Belieho getting up on the inside. Oh, we say four lengths in the twinkling of an eye. Lounge Lizard is going backwards. Here's Belieho getting right up on the inside inside to hit the front. Gull Condor he spat the bit out on the outside double dandy but it's Bellaho in front Bellaho's kicked a length on double dandy followed by Gull Condor double dandy coming at Bellaho but the top weight's too good and this is four in a row for him. Bellaho wins it a length the double dandy. Third Gull Condor then Blazing Devil Dora Boy 
Another three-year-old Brisbane bound is True Show, who gave Bruce Compton yet another win here. He's the leader in the green colours, and he fought on well under hard whip riding. Corner in the Lord Mayor's Cup. Sikorsky is the immediate challenger. Third is Essential, and then I like you, who's a thousand to one. True Show past the ledger. He leads about three quarters. Sikorsky, who's the big danger in third position. Essential at the 200. True Show just in front. Compton works overtime with a whip. Sikorsky second. Captain goes for the persuader now. Has the imported horse got much left? I think so because True. True Show safely holding him, and True Show goes to the line and wins it by a long neck to Sikorsky. Third essential, fourth Zambawanga. Mick Dittman wrapped up a winning double win, Spend the Money, who's the grey in second place at this stage, uh, fought on too strongly for the leader, Interhotes. And dropping off is Todd A's and then So Duck. The big grey from Wyong, Interhotes turns the corner, two lengths on, Spend the Money. Final move a length further back and two to Kuala Bay and then bold Heather not doing enough. It's Interhotes being taken on by Spend the Money but still holding that horse at the 200. A couple to final move, looks a race between Interhotes and Spend the Money, the two greys. It's Interhotes just the leader, Spend the Money grinding away spend the money might get into hoats i reckon he's going to yes he's got him spend the money spend the money's wanted ahead to into hoats third home was germanic fourth was final move and then came kuala bay and bold heather final event went to dallas king who's in a handy second at the home turn he skipped clear about the 250 and uh, won well dallas king second dr clockwork handled the bend a little awkwardly and two to double edge past the 300 and the rider goes for the whip on half shilling schofield dallas king's joined it dr clockwork on the outside plugging away half shillings history the leader dallas king he's the one to beat and dallas king past the 200 little zard hands and heels and it's dallas king about two and a half dr clockwork hustle and bustle and on the outside ming emperor but it's an easy one for Dallas King. Dallas King cruises to the post and wins it easily. Second, I reckon, Ming Emperor. Third, Hustle and Bustle and fourth, Dr. Clockwork. Now the eight events on a wet Rose Hill track yesterday. Now the TAB information from Sydney. One and three, the double, $25.60. The treble, eight, one and three, $951.80. And the extra double from Rose Hill, eight and one, $29 even. And the opening event was the hurdle handicap and it was a, a thrilling finish to the hurdle after 3,200 metres, Mansion Downs and here we come. Settled down over the last 100 metres last and it was Mansion down. Downs who just Mansion had too many Downs guns to score by had half a line of three over it, And these three have got it between them. Royal Triumph the outside, Mansion Downs and on the rails here we come. They draw to the last, locked in line. Over it, they landed together. What a battle this trio. It's Mansion Downs and here we come getting away slightly from Royal Triumph. Mansion Downs put its head in front. Here we come fighting on, but Mansion Downs is going to score about a half length to here we come. Royal Triumph weakened four lengths away third on our selection. Went to the heavily back favourite uh, Caledonian boy who's Celestial moving up threateningly into fourth in place now in the green colours. The outside, my old deal is gone. On our selection, Dad and Dave's had it. Green action hit the front. Celestial boy under the whip trying to peg it back. Nothing else in it. It's green action in front on the outside. Caledonian boy grabbing it. Caledonian boy finishing the better. And and Caledonian boy, the one the money was for, streaks away at the finish to win two and a half lengths to green action. It's like the hurdle, the steeper was a great Kato finish King with Wayne Newey just edging out Waikato King. Wayne Newey came at him from Sink for Supper. It's Wayne Newey drawing level with Waikato King and Sink for Supper, the three of them. Here's a soul-stirring finish here, the three of them in line. On the outside, Wayne Newey and Waikato King, they're going to fight it out. Wayne Newey and neck in front, Waikato King fighting back doggedly. Nothing between them, Waikato King, Wayne Newey, Wayne Newey ahead in front and he'll win it. Wayne Newey about a half-neck Waikato King. Four lengths away third then was uh, Sing for Supper. Fourth went to Noble Cavalier who went to the lead at the home turn. That's him in the blinkers who's edge clear now and he holds on to the big super trim and Taxall who flies home. Mr Glamour coming down the outside. However, as they get to the 200 metre mark now, super trim getting up on the inside, tackling Noble Cavalier. They're battling it out from Palace Intrigue and Mr Glamour and then Norcunda. But Noble Cavalier just in front of super trim is holding it at bay as they get near the line. And Noble Cavalier wins a half length super trim Taxall from nearly last got up for third. Derived the straight six to went to Banker's Choice, who's right on the outside, and he actually now scores clearly from Advert and Pride of Kalina. On the outside, Derive is clear, and down the outside, Banker's Choice a mile in front might nearly be in front of them all. It's Derive tackled by Pride of Kalina and Advert. Banker's Choice out very wide. There's not a lot in it as they get near the line. Banker's Choice is in front out wide, and Banker's Choice has won it, I reckon. Banker's Choice alone on the outside, I'd say, has won from Advert, Pride of Kalina. Derive.
Solidly back to Flying Sox, took out the sixth event from Flying Eskimo, who gets a run through on the inside, and past the baton runs on late. the baton, the odds on Pop struggling. Flying Eskimo got to the lead, Flying Sox under the whip, comes at it again, heads it off, past the baton, coming home now. It's going to be Flying Sox, and on the inside of it, Flying Eskimo, but Flying Sox doing better. Past the baton, coming now, but Flying Sox will win it. About a neck to Flying Eskimo, and a head to pass the baton. At the Use the space made immense for her last start defeat by taking up the seventh. That's her in blue well colours in second place Glenn now. Roycroft, Glenn Morriston getting out from Royal Riband, Kiwi Slave and Sir is it. And Fox Seal pull to the outside. At the 250, Kentish tackled by Use the Space. Went up on the outside, then Glenn Morriston. Oh, Fox Seal knocks her uh, live Albert over. It's Use the Space in front. Kiwi Slave picking it up near the line. Use the Space just in front as they hit the line. Nearly a dead heat. Kiwi Slave and Use the Space. She improved at eight, didn't she? Use the Space. Uh, third, maybe uh, Ross from Glen Morris, and nothing in that. Good Ruby finish to the final course, event with Goblet the on the another inside. down the extreme yeah, outside. Hands and heels from Harry White defeats Mini Hope. Girls gone. Moonlight Saunter is still there at this stage, and down the outside it's Spirit of Normandy racing up to Endearing and Goblet with about 300 to go. The outside's in front. Spirit of Normandy the leader now from Goblet out after it. Endearing is struggling, and uh, Mini Hope running on pretty well in the centre. Mini Hope and Goblet are the two to fight it out. Mini Hope in front. Goblet's gobbling it up on the outside, and Goblet's going to get up and beat Mini Hope. Either Moonlight Saunter or Spirit of Normandy, third, from Ruby as It was significant that both the uh, straight uh, events at Flemington yesterday were won by horses down the grandstand side and uh, Goblet <laughs> taking out the final event. Look now at the TAB information from Flemington. 15 and 4, the double, $347.30. And the treble, 215 and 4, $2,036.90. Good dividends there. And the extra double following on, also a good divvy here, 2 and 12, 104. Well, punters have had a pretty good run well, here. You've been espousing the talents of Kingdom Bay all week and told me on the phone Friday, unbeatable. That was just for you. Oh. <laughs> there was a late... I've got the number two tips again, have I? <laughs> the B team you're in. <laughs> there was a late change of uh, tips there. About the 200 metres, I switched to Phoenix Rising. <laughs> the first at Eagle Farm yesterday went to Ken Russell on a Lingerbond Russell, bouncing back from an injury the week before. In fact, he took out two of the first three races. This is a lovely ride on a Lingerbond. Third and fourth on the fence most of the way and challenged at the right time in the straight to defeat the favourite, Sir Biscay. In front of Sir Biscay, they're together as they go over the crossing in third place half crescent then a linger bond followed by flash at toe and a heiny terry then vice versa ace tone on the inside well back noble cause just behind port of france and princess diana last straightening up ziff off the outside just in front of subisco half crescent third a linger bond fourth on the inside and then ace tone vice versa pulled to the outside running on fairly well and then port of france subisco grabbed the lead 250 meters to go ditman's gone for the whip on him he's about a length in front of linger bond trying hard on the outside and vice versa is running on gamely the favorites in a little bit of trouble Trouble Subiscay, Alin Jabon has just about got him. Alin Jabon moved up on the outside, grabbed the lead and draws clear close to home to win it by almost a length. Alin Jabon first, Subiscay second, vice versa third. Racing Minister Russ Hins has had a great run of late and uh, continued yesterday at Eagle Farm with Quistador taking out the second novice handicap. This is a smart three-year-old. He was well ridden by uh, Shane Scriven. Came from well back and is uh, just a shade too strong for Rangamac. The field going up to midfield. Rangamac on the inside of Quistador who's been shuffled back. Then Sato Gay. Gay Burney began very quickly but has drifted back to near last now as they race down the side of Dark Furies at the rear. 600 metres left to go. Zata Peck still the leader going strongly in front. In fact, he's running off the track by the looks of it. The he can't control him. He's five wide. He's six wide. He's about ten wide now. Zada Peck. He took Big Chello and Paul Mac Jr. right off the track with him. And Hoyer Flight is left in front. It's Hoyer Flight about a half length clear on the outside trying hard. Rangamac. Keystador got a nice run up along the inside. He's looking for the way clear now. And Gay Burney's coming home strongly. Dark Fury on the outside with a good run. Rangamac takes the lead. 150 to go. It's Rangamac just in front. Keystador getting clear. Flashing home. Rangamac just in front. Keystador coming at Rangamac. Keistador takes the lead and gets up to win. Keistador first, Rangamac second, third, Gay Burney. Well, that was the uh, end of the section as far as favourites were concerned at Eagle Farm yesterday. Christador landing the money there at 5-2. to two. This is the flying handicap, a new bliss in black colours, patiently ridden by Russell, runs on too strongly for Fixed Flush and Raheen Sun. New bliss a little bit wide early. Drifting back is Wallander without Sophia, Raheen Sun and Tide Time. On settling down, 1,200 metres left to go. Fixed Flush goes to the lead. High signal, three quarters of a length away second. He's got the advantage of the inside high signal. Three quarters of a length then to Del Dier. Raheen Sun pulling very hard at the moment. He's fourth on the inside of Crawford. Then Tide Time racing inside of New Bliss and Chief out a little bit wide, well under second last and now Sophia at the rear. 
Heading down the side now, 8.50 metres left to go. Fixed price to the leader. Three quarters of a length in front of High Signal, who still retains the inside running. A length away third, Del Dier, then Rahin's son, Crawford on the outside. Tide time midfield at the moment, racing on the inside there. A half length further back to New Bliss, followed by Chief Mate Wallander and our Sophia as last. To the home turn, 4.50 metres out. High signal with that inside running went through to join Fix Flash again as they swing around the corner. Raheen Sun's a length and a half away third, followed by Del Dier, Crawford to the outside, and then tied time a new bliss. Fix Flash is still the leader, 300 metres to go. He's getting a little bit anxious now on high signal. He's pushing him along. He's finding it a bit of a task to join Fix Flash. Raheen Sun on the outside, and new bliss is coming home pretty quickly. It's Fix Flash just in front of high signal. New bliss is the danger on the outside. He's flying home. Fix Flash just in front of new bliss. New bliss grabbed Fix Flash and got up to win it. It's New Bliss grabbing the lead right on the line, and he scored. New Bliss first, second, Fix Flash, third, Raheen Sun. Well, Ken Russell timing his run to perfection there on New Bliss, who certainly deserved the victory. He's been very consistent of late. We'll show you the slow motion now. There's some good runs in this race. It's Fix Flush, uh, who I think is sure to improve, just on the outside of High Signal. They're in front. Raheen Sun in the white and the green cap. Further out is New Bliss in the black. Behind them on the fence is our Sophia running on nicely. And uh, Wallunda's just out of camera range there. But I'm sure uh, Fixed Flush, who's one off the fence, is uh, going to pick up a race shortly. But New Bl Bliss uh, deserving that victory. And uh, Raheen's son and um, our Sophia also very tidy runs. Uh, just after the race, I, I caught up with uh, trainer Bruce McLaughlin, who prepares Fixed Flush, and uh, Bruce was pretty pleased with his performance. Flush's uh, run today. Very good run, Bart. Both of his runs this time in have been very good. Do you think he's come up uh, a little better this campaign? I think he's got a little bit better as he's got a bit older. He's got a bit stronger. He's, uh, uh, you know, I think he's got a little developed a bit and uh, it looks as though he could have be been a little bit better than he was last time in. This is only his second run back. Do you think there's some fitness improvement there? Yes, I think his next couple of runs will be his best. It's timed out very well, actually. What's going to be your lead up to the Elders? I'll probably run him in a fortnight and that'll probably be his last run. Uh, and he should be cherry ripe for the elders after that. The other one we'd like to ask you about, your three-year-old, let me tell. How's he progressed since he's running the Black Douglas? He's done very well. It was only his fifth race start. He's going to run next Saturday, probably in the welter, actually. And there's a seven furlong welter on and a graduation. So he'll run in one of those. And if he runs in the um, uh, welter and wins it, well, he qualifies for the strad break. But he's very immature. And uh, we're just playing it by ear with him and just seeing what happens with him as we go along. But he's done extremely well. I think he's kept on, kept on improving a bit as he's gone along. This is the fourth event, the Crest uh, Cup, and Noble Lad causes an upset here. He certainly was suited. There was a downpour just before the race, and the track uh, changed from good to dead, and he relished the conditions to defeat uh, the favourite, Valorous. Length, Mr. Hunter second, Hiro third, Bastille pushing through in the centre to be fourth on the inside of Valorous, who's a bit wide. Bucking Rip over on the inside, Amazing Gift is out three deep at the moment, then Noble Lad owned Prince and Remus the last. Running past the 1800 as they head up the side. Pola Mola bowling along in front. In fact, pulling a little bit now. Leads by a length. Mr. Hunter second. Haro settling well. Third on the rail. Racing Harrow the Gold Coast. A little bit deep. Racing three wide on the outside of Bastille. Bucking Rippers over on the inside. Followed by Noble Lad. Amazing gift. Then own Prince. And remuster last. No speed on. Mr. Hunter takes over. 1400 metres left to go. And as Mr. Hunter put back on the bit, lead, leading by a length. In second place is Valorous, a length away third on the inside, Polar Mola, followed by Bastille. Amazing Gift is still wide, Haro over on the inside, then Noble Lad, Bucking Rip, Remuster, Own Prince's last. Just on 1,200 metres to go, and Mr Hunter leads the way. He's a length and a half in front, Valorous second, Polar Mola, a neck back third on the rails, Bastille, a length away fourth, followed by Haro, and then Amazing Gift, Noble Lad, Bucking Rip, and then Remuster and Own Prince. No real change in the order. Heading up towards the 8.50, Mr Hunter a length in front, Valorous second traveling okay third on the inside polar mola followed by bastille who's going nicely in fourth place amazing gift next on the outside haro pushed along a little bit then noble lad remaster bucking rip and own prince 650 meters out mr hunter still the leader he's a length in front valor is second polar mola a length away third bastille a half length away fourth followed by noble lad and then amazing gift remaster haro and then uh, back second last his own prince and at the rear of the field bucking rip around the corner now 450 meters out Mr. Hunter straightens up almost the length in front of Valorous. Polar Mola going for a run on the inside. Not much room there. Noble Lad starting a run. Bastille on the outside. And then Amazing Gift. Valorous loomed up quickly. Bastille on the outside. Noble Lad coming in.
into it with a great run as well. And Polar Mola on the inside. Noble Lad has taken the lead. It's Noble Lad in front of Bastille and Valorous. This looks as though it's going to be a boil over. Noble Lad just in front. Valorous having another crack at him, but Noble Lad's going to be too good. Noble Lad first, Valorous second, Bastille third. Yes, Noble Lad scoring uh, a decisive victory there. Certainly the rain affected track suited him, but he was turned out in, uh, in great order by Bruce Brown. We'll show you the slow motion now. And Noble Lad, who was uh, beautifully ridden by Mike Pelling, reaches the lead here just inside the, uh, the 200 metres. Pelling going for the whip. That's him one from the outside. On his outside in the pink is uh, Mick Dittman on Bastille. And on Noble Lad's inside is Valorous, who at the 200 metres looked as though he's going to drop out of it. But he got a bit of a, a rattle on again at the finish to uh, get second placing. Peter Cook uh, going for the whip there on Valorous, who's inclined to switch his tail a little bit as he's going to, uh, to the line. But Noble Lad out wide, scoring uh, decisively from Valorous, and uh, in third place was Bastille, who uh, is likely to improve. Well, uh, up until uh, yesterday, Noble Lad was eligible for novice class. It was a pretty brave move by his trainer, uh, Bruce Brown, to nominate him for the Crest Cup, and uh, Bruce was pretty excited after the race. Bruce, it was a bit lucky that uh, Noble Lad was in the field. Yeah, definitely, but uh, Dad brought a horse up called Jogger for this race and for the carnival, and he got down for virus, so they, I rang up and found out what the nominations were, and uh, just a normal graduation, I thought, so I thought, well, what the hell, he's only got to beat a couple of lengths every time, so we'll take a gamble, and the range helped. <laughs> yeah, it was meant to be. They got the rain just before the race. Exactly, yes. Team down, real good. <laughs> You're getting him ready for the Brisbane Cup? Yes, for sure. That's what we just kept him going. He was going to go out four weeks ago and we had a discussion. We decided we'll keep him going for the Brisbane Cup because he's bred to stay the distance and that's what the owner brought him for. And you never know, it might rain on Brisbane Cup day. Well, he's a very tough uh, galloper because he's had a lot of racing recently, but he looked uh, probably as, as well as he has today. Yes, but he, he gets a bit nervous and I think he's got to have a lot just to get the nervousness out. And today's the first time he's really relaxed in a race too. You know, he's settled beautifully and... Got home, thank goodness. <laughs> right, well, he was a novice horse before today. Now he's open company. What are you looking at now? Oh, really, most probably some of these other lead-ups for the Brisbane Cup where you don't get a penalty because he's got to get him 47 and a half on his back or 49 or something like this because it's a non-penalty race, this one, so... Well, he's, he's automatically qualified, so you're, you're in there already. Yeah, that's right. So we just pick our races so if he doesn't get a penalty and even if he does, you know, doesn't win one or, you know, hopefully he can, but if he doesn't, well, sweet, we'll get him the Brisbane Cup for lightweight. All right, Bruce, good luck with him. Thanks, mate. Bruce Brown there, one of Brisbane's most promising young trainers. They were the first to four from Eagle Farm yesterday. We'll take a break now and come back and have a look at the big one, the Queensland Guineas. Five, which was the uh, Queensland Guineas from Eagle Farm yesterday, and the fairer sex had the finish to themselves, with the Melbourne filly Phoenix Rising proving just a shade too good for Canterbury Bell, the Kiwi filly. Four or five lengths, he's a long last on settling down. Phoenix Rising going very fast with Pagos Yarn and Bank Coin. Fourth Sea Road. Fifth was poured in on the outside. Prince Bourbon over on the rails. A length into Canterbury Bell. Most impressive Ballyman's Boy and Ballyho trapped a little bit wide. Kingdom Bay up midfield at the moment, but off the track a little bit, racing about three deep, then Prospect Ridge. Prince Bourbon, after beginning well, is drifting well back in the field. On stage is next on the outside of Vita, then Golden Vogue, Mar Footer, and Mr. Merrymaker, six lengths last. A thousand metres left to go, Bank Coin the leader, a half length in front of Phoenix Rising. Pegos Yarn nicely placed, a length away third on the rails. Ballyho trapped a little bit wide at the moment. Ballyman's boy in between horses. Then Sea Road, Kingdom Bay, Port in. Followed by Marfooter taking off around the field. Moving up on the outside of On Stage. And Canterbury Bell pushing through in the centre. Golden Vogue is next on the rails. And then most impressive Prospect Ridge, Vita, Prince Bourbon and Mr Merrymaker. As they race down the side, 6.50 metres out. Bank Coin just in front of Phoenix Rising. Ballyho's a length and a half away. Third on the outside of Pagos Yarn. And then Kingdom Bay, who's nicely placed. He's there poised to have the last shot at these leaders. Followed by Sea Road on the inside and then Ballyman's Boy and further back Canterbury Bell. Straightening up now, 400 metres left to go. Phoenix Rising takes the lead but is tackled immediately by Pagos Yarn. And Pagos Yarn has hit the front on the outside. Pagos Yarn just in front of Phoenix Rising who's kicking again. Kingdom Bay is now starting his run on the outside. He's moved up into third place but he's hard ridden. He's struggling at the moment. And then Canterbury Bell. Phoenix Rising, she's booted away from them again close to home. Canterbury Bell is flying at the end. It's going to be an all Phillies finish and as they hit the line, Phoenix Phoenix Rising wins it by a length. Phoenix Rising first, Canterbury Bell second, Pagos Yarn third. Two outstanding fillies there, uh, Phoenix Rising and Canterbury Bell. And I think the latter is going to be improved. She's going to be very hard to beat in the Channel 7 Classic at Doombin in a fortnight. So 
jog that name down. This is the slow-mo now, and Phoenix Rising's in front. Pagos Yarn's the horse on her outside. His uh, run has just about ended here, and uh, one from the outside is Canterbury Bell. On her outside is the favourite, Kingdom Bay, who's struggling at this point. But it's Phoenix Rising, hands and heels from Chris Barrett, clear. Here comes Canterbury Bell with a strong run to uh, get second placing. She cuts down the margin to a length on the line, and I thought uh, she was really powering home that last 100 metres. I don't think uh, the added distance of the Channel 7 Classic will worry her. The, uh, the winner, Phoenix Rising, was turned out in great order by uh, former Queenslander Russell Cleland, who's now training uh, at Mornington, just outside of Melbourne, and uh, he certainly has got this filly going great guns at the moment. She's uh, now equal favourite for the Elders Handicap. Uh, she's not a certain starter. Russell's uh, playing his cards pretty close to his chest, but I think that could be the race that she's aimed for. But we caught up with Russell just after the Guineas yesterday. Russ, it must be great to come back in front of your home crowd and land a classic race like the Guineas. Oh, it's great. Yeah, it's great, Mark, yeah. What about Phoenix Rising? She's a good mare to train? Yeah, she's lovely mare to train. We had a little bit of trouble with the, this tying-up business, which is a trait in the Cardinals, but she seems to be over that, and the warmer weather up here seems to help her a lot, you know. What about your training? You, you specialise in interval training, which has been adapted from uh, the swimmers, I believe. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, swimmers and athletes, yes, um, and we find it very successful, you know. What's, it's not a thing that will adapt to every horse, but the horse that will adapt to it, they just they seem to improve anyway. What about this uh, filly? Uh, what have you done with her during the week? Well, on, uh, she had a hard hit out last Saturday, which was a tough run. I thought she was very, well, she didn't handle this way of going. She was a lot better filly today, as you saw. Um, and on Thursday morning, she, she instead of galloping, say, uh, giving her a thousand metres, where she'd come back a bit jaded, you work over two five hundreds where you give her a break in between. She's still in the same amount of work, but the lactate's not building up her body and she's still fresh and feeling well. She obviously was fresh, fresh and feeling well today. It was a great win. Yes. Do you think there's further improvement in her? Oh, I think with her, just only a sixth run, I think, or sixth or seventh run, and, you know, she's not a seasoned horse yet. Like some of them, some of them always had 12, 15 starts, you know, so there should be improvement that way, you know. What are you going to do with her the rest of the Winter Carnival? Um, well, we'll see how she, we'll think about the elders, uh, but she's racing season horse like King Phoenix. She's a very good horse. We'll see how he goes in Adelaide next week. Um, and there's a 10 furlong on uh, Channel 7 race, Saver and Demon, I think. Uh, we'll think about that race too. Okay, that's, you know, as you say, the middle distance. You, you obviously feel she will handle that. Oh, yes, I think so, yes. But, you know, she's, at this stage, she just might. And we'll see how she goes this week and we'll make her mind up by the end of the week. You know? All right, Russell. Congratulations once again. Good drink, Mark. Russell Cleland, who trained the, uh, the winner, Phoenix Rising. This is the sixth race, the Armstrong two-year-old, and Delissa had the bookies cheering when he scored at 100 to 1. ...and then ruled the fleet, followed by Power Arrow on the inside, and Zip and Co trapped a little bit wide. Happy Star going through in the centre to be about fourth as they run to the home turn. Kadichi's right off the track, Posada's as well back, Delisa's next on the inside, and then Safe Pursuit on the way we are, with Ice Plate well back in the field. Straightening up now, 400 metres to go. Picata, the leader, joined on the outside by Roman Fantasy. Dittman's the first to get anxious, he's pushing the top weight along a little bit and Roman Fantasy went straight past him on the outside. Roman Fantasy almost the length in front of Picata. Delisa's is running on fairly well and then Rock Legend. Morlin made down the outside and then Happy Star. Here's Delisa coming out after Roman Fantasy. She's feeling the pinch Roman Fantasy. Delisa takes the lead. Another boil over by the looks of it. Delisa shooting clear at the end and wins it by a length and a half. Delisa first, Roman Fantasy or Rock Legend in a photo second and third. Tidy effort by the Gold Coast filly, Roman Fantasy, to get uh, second place there. She's sure to be improved, but uh, by the same token, a very good performance by the winner, and I think there's further improvement in him. Seventh event went to Common Man at 33 to 1, another one for the bookies, defeating Agro Khan and Avsun. Four deep as they go over the crossing, then Avsun, Malara Lad next, and then Bartlett Noble Selt. Ring of Melody on the inside of Star Practice, Calm Gentler Pagal, and Call Me Kathy last. Around the home turn, just over 400 metres to go, Agro Khan loomed up on the outside to poke his nose in front. Agro Khan just in front of Montecito. Common Man getting a split near the inside. Freckles Brown is struggling a little bit at the moment. Then Avson Malara Lad down the outside. 250 metres to go. Agro Khan the leader. He's clear. He's a length in front of Common Man. Then Avson Malara Lad and Freckles Brown. It's Agro Khan in front. He's starting to feel the pinch a little bit now. Common Man regains the lead on the inside. He goes to the front. Common Man and draws clear of Agro Khan to win it by a length. Common Man first. Agro Khan second. Tight second and third. It's been a day of outs for Neil Williams up until the final race. He was second there on Agro Khan, but he certainly got the best out of Who's Calling to scrape home in the last, defeating Peter Cook on Shaney Prince. Who's Calling has been a bit of a bridesmaid, so this was uh, a well-deserved win. Shaney Prince right around the field, making a big dash, and he's raced up into fourth place now. Followed by Little Troy and then Sovereign Sales battles Wake and Fury has dropped out a long last to the home turn, 500 metres left to go. 
Our Rosalie is joined quickly by Yatney and Shaney Prince continuing that run on the outside. He's loomed up to them and now he takes the lead. It's Shaney Prince going to the front as they straighten up almost a length clear. Who's calling? Running on gamely on the outside. Then Yatney, our Rosalie feeling the pinch. Noble Suva to the outside and then Lock Air. Shaney Prince is the leader. 200 metres to go. Leads by almost a length on who's calling. Who's having a crack at him now? Then Noble Suva and Lock Air. Shaney walk just in front. Who's calling? Slowly but surely picking him up. She's going to break through today. It's who's calling just in front. They hit the line and she's won it by a head. Who's calling first? Shady Prince second. Noble Suva may get third just in front of... A for effort there for Neil Williams. He was really pounding that whip to uh, coax who's calling over the line first for, for a change. And now the uh, TAB information from Eagle Farm. 16 and 12 the double. $1,226.40. A huge treble dividend yesterday for 4, 16 and 12. $14,063.60. Thank you. Oh, the uh, six pick. You nearly forgot this, Pat. Four, six, 16, 12, 12 and 8. So the even numbers there, no one had them. Not surprisingly, the Delissa and Common Man knocking out most. Division 2 paid a healthy dividend, $12,311.30. Division 3, $321.15. Thank you, Robbie. Very well done, Bart. We'll take a break in sports soon. Bart returns the other side of this break with the Sydney Racing. And Rocky Roller took out the main race, but this is the opening event. Count Bevick swept to the lead in the pink colours halfway down the straight and went on to score decisively. By Gotti, he'll take some beating, Count Bevick. He's in no danger, in fact. Sam City a second, about three or four lengths away to Top Satchel, but Count Bevick kept going by Little Rod. She is going to prove much too good. Count Bevick races home the easiest of winners from Top Satchel. Dorica Galaxy was long odds on to take out the second. Had a bit of a struggle to get home, but on the line was powering away. And as they straighten, proud Aussie taken on by Grey Condor and Prince Mundo. Dorica Galaxy at the moment struggling to reach Grey Condor. And the top weight, Grey Condor kicked a length, Prince Mundo. Dorica Galaxy on the outside, battling on fairly. Grey Condor in front, Dorica Galaxy trying hard to pick it up. Grey Condor just in front, but Dorica Galaxy's going to get it. Blazing Saddles Colt to Crossroads uh, took out the third event from the unlucky to Truchka. Crossroads likely to come to Brisbane now. Now Youngbury goes for Crossroads. The favourite responds. To Truchka comes after it in second. Posse now followed then by Prince of Jazz at the 150 and Crossroads. He's safely holding to Truchka at this stage. Then Prince of Jazz and Secret Flash. But it's all Crossroads. And Crossroads goes to the post and wins it by a length. To Truchka has run second. Dinky Flyer flashed home from uh, centre field at the top of the straight to defeat Tristram's girl in the fourth. About to pull the whip, battling on Diamond Dance to Royal Rendezvous, then Premier Flight and Spring Run. Gypsy Alert, Shorten goes for the whip, she's about two Diamond Dance, followed by Wink at Me, and then Spring Run and Premier Flight. Gypsy Alert is very tired, here's Dinky Flyer flying with sparkling century. Dinky Flyer's going to knock them all out. Dinky Flyer! By Jeep. Fifth event went to Rocky Roller. He's clear at this stage and went right on with the job in the straight in an impressive Brisbane Cup trial. Led by about three lengths on Braille, getting the second. Zoning can't win, then Viva follow Port Fair only plugging, but it is all Rocky Ruler. Rocky Ruler's four lengths in front of Braille. Port Fair just can't find his best form. And this will trot in Rocky Ruler. He came right away and won with his ears pricked by five lengths to Braille. Ron Quinton scored on four Papa in the sixth event deck and a hard riding hit the lead inside the 200 metres. Hot Classic dropping out of it at the head of the others then. Gippslanders running on strongly at the 200 mark. Divisible the leader from four Papa. Kingdom Road on the outside is trying to get on terms with them. Four Papa grabbed the lead close to home and four Papa starting to draw clear. Look at Copper Wing and wide out Gippsland but four Papa is too good and wins from either Gippsland or Copper Wing. Weight of 60 and a half kilos couldn't stop Calaboose from taking out the welter handicap. He scored from Silver Lay. Silver Lay on the outside of Lofty Bear. Gone Troppo getting a rails run. Further out, Calaboose is boxing on strongly with Kaidahom. Silver Lay and Gone Troppo are battling it out. Calaboose trying hard to get to them. And Calaboose out in the middle. It's swept to the lead close to home. Gee, it's a big run under 60 and a half kilos. Calaboose is too good. And Calaboose wins from Silver Lay. It was Ron Quinton again in the final event on Bow Kingdom, who withstood a protest from the runner-up by Folk. By Folk under the whip is running on strongly and further out Bow Kingdom at the 200. Pulsane just the leader. Prince Vanquish coming again by Folk. And now Bow Kingdom down the outside coming up the lot of them. He might beat them all. Bow Kingdom has raced up on the outside. He hit the lead close to home. Quinton at his best. And Bow Kingdom beat by Folk. Third Pulsane. That was the card from Warwick Farm yesterday. I look now at the uh, TAB information from that meeting. 
four and one the double, $71.30 the dividend, six, four and one the treble, $901.20, and the extra double from Warwick Farm, two and one, $10.60. Looking yesterday, the first was the hurdle and went to the Tasmanian Mansion Downs, who uh, was a little too strong from the uh, the final hurdle to the finish. Up until that stage, he and My Hutch had had a great struggle. That's Mansion Downs on the outside. About three parts of a length in front of My Hutch. He hit it hard, but landed a half length clear. Two or three then further back in the field came Quobite. Mansion Downs now dashed away a length in front. He's had to go for the whip, but he's drawing away. And the favourites home in the first. Mansion Downs, the Tasmanian, wins it by about three parts of a length to My Hutch. A neck away third, Quobite. The second went to Luther's Luck, who looked, uh, sorry, looked as though it was going to Luther's Luck at the uh, home turn, but Mighty Lancer gets a run through on the inside and is too strong. Incisor going for a split. He's not finding a lot. Luther's Luck as Mighty Lancer comes at him on the inside. Mighty Lancer takes the lead near the line, and Mighty Lancer's going to win it about a neck to Luther's Luck. The incisor third from Roby's Pride. Third went to Honey Bridge, who was well clear after they straightened. Won nicely from Sabinella. On Sovereigna's not in the race. Honey Bridge in front of the 200, holding Sabinella and Cove at bay. And with about 100 to go, it's Honey Bridge nicely clear from Sabinella and Cove, and the others a long way back. And Honey Bridge goes on to score well. Two lengths to Sabinella. Cove is third, about four lengths to Ghost Rider, fourth. Carabana took out the fourth event, uh, always in control in the straight. Just a couple of flicks with the whip to uh, keep going and score from endearing. By Wonder Twig, Carabaha well clear at the 300, starting to shorten stride a bit on the outside, endearing coming after it, but with 100 to go, Carabaha holding it safely at bay, and Carabaha is going on to score. It'll win by about a length from endearing. Uh, third placing, Frosty Dawn, I think, got it. Eight-year-old Penny Edition, who's a marvel. He took his uh, stake earnings past eight, uh, past 400,000 and he stormed home to take out the fit. Penny Edition running on fairly with smart little lady. Check the deck. Martek in front, narrowly from Bow Radiant. The challenger's coming now. Penny Edition over on the outside is coming with a good run after the leaders at this stage and Brigand Rose. But Penny Edition's finishing too well and it'll win. Uh, very close for second, Martek or Brigand Rose. Sixth event went to the heavily backed favourite Broquillo in the lime green colours and the blinkers. Over on the inside, Hydrology getting through with loaded cannons and then King Canal running greenly. But it's Broquillo in front with 100 to go from Red Opaque and loaded cannons. Broquillo the leader near the line and Broquillo's going to go on and win. Scores a length and a half to Red Opaque, loaded cannons third from Hydrology. Rider Kevin Forrester had a heavy tumble from his Mount Master of Disguise about the 1,000 metres. Just behind the leaders, you'll see him uh, hit the fence hard. Master of Disguise uh, stumbles badly and Forrester pelted in the air there. Fortunately, most of the uh, horses had uh, gone around him by then, uh, but he did have a very, very heavy tumble and stewards uh, have adjourned an inquiry into that incident. But uh, Forrester, certainly a very hard fall. The seventh was the, was the textile handicap and the uh, New Zealand stayer Rosen Thistle was too strong for My Dulcinea. My Dulcinea's got out, but he might have had to give it too big a start. Rosen Thistle in front with 100 to go, holding My Dulcinea at bay with 100 yards to go from Rotomar King and Zafiro out wide. And Rosen Thistle and Bobby Skelton win at a length to My Dulcinea. Well, a steeplechaser, Rotomar King showed a bit more pace today. He's run third. Final event went to the Jeff Murphy trained filly Tristina who swept clear at the home turn and went right on with the job to record a very easy win. Further ahead now, Tristina by four lengths, Zizlis getting out, starting to run on well from All Flower, but Tristina's going to win by four or five lengths. All Flower and Zizlis battle out the miners, All Flower second, Zizlis third. Easy win there to Tristina. <laughs> now the uh, TAB information from Caulfield. Mm -hmm. And one and one the double, $34. Treble, three one and one, $167.60. Extra double, $426.10 from Caulfield yesterday. That's all our racing segment this morning. Uh, the Winter Carnival now in full swing. This week we've got midweek meetings at uh, Doombin on Wednesday, Bundamba on Thursday, and next Saturday at Eagle Farm, it's Queensland Oaks Day, and one of the other highlights will be the Lightning Handicap. That's our racing segment this morning. I think we've got uh, Marshall Dobson. Now, the winner was Sir Zephyr, uh, the horse that catapulted jockey Jim Cassidy from the saddle in the Rain Lover Plate the previous week. Sir Zephyr, of course, was a good second to Tristark in the recent AJC Derby in Sydney. Wayne Harris replaced Cassidy yesterday. You don't often see horses accelerate at the end of 2,500 metres races. When they do, they're very, very good horses. What's the way this bloke accelerates? 
Under the 600 metre mark, Jazz Boy next and Show Glen will come for home very, very deep but making ground. At the top of the straight in the Mercedes Benz Derby of 85 now, and Sir Zephyr goes up quickly to be a leader. With it is Conceited Man in the middle and over on the inside, battling away Noble Cavalier, but Sir Zephyr's gone for home in going very strongly at the 200 metre mark, and he dashed away. Sir Zephyr is putting a space on his rivals. It's going to be a good go for the miners, battling away Conceited Man, followed then by Noble Cavalier, but oh gee, Sir Zephyr is going to trounce his Mercedes Benz rivals. It's a very big win. Sir Zephyr by four or five lengths, Conceited Man a gallant second. Third home in behind those four lengths away, Noble Cavalier. Well, a sensational win there by Sir Zephyr, ridden by Sydney Sider Wayne Harris. Your commentator, of course, was Ron Paps. His next run will be in the Adelaide Cup on Monday week. Now we go to Caulfield in Melbourne, the Hawksburn handicap, and the very consistent penny edition breaks through for a win. And then check the deck and solo affair to the outside from Selmark. In the straight they race and Martek a dash to the lead about a length and a half clear of Bow Radiant. Over on the outside, Mazorkskin, Stratosphere, Penny Edition running on fairly with Smart Little Lady, check the deck. Martek in front, narrowly from Bow Radiant. The challenger's coming now, Penny Edition over on the outside is coming with a good run after the leaders at this stage and Brigand Rose. But Penny Edition's finishing too well and it'll win. Uh, very close for second, Martek or Brigand Rose. Penny Edition started at 7 to 1. The big race yesterday in Brisbane, of course, was the Queensland Guineas, and a filly called Phoenix Rising slapped the backsides of the Colts. And here's the first winning ride in Brisbane to young Chris Barrett. Sea Road next on the inside of Ballyman's Boy Kingdom Base, just behind those from Porton and Canterbury. Bellas a turn into the straight and Phoenix Rising, the leader 300 ago, but Pago's yarns pounced on him. Kingdom Base two lengths away under the whip, and then Sea Road Bank Coin, and they're followed by Canterbury Bell at the 200 and Phoenix. Rising beat off Pago's yarn two lengths away. Canterbury Bell Kingdom Bay's gone, but Phoenix Rising's got them stitched a hundred ago in front of Canterbury Bell and Pago's yarn. And Phoenix Rising wins the guineas. Phoenix Rising first, Canterbury Bell second, Pago's yarn third. That's the way they finished, and your commentator, of course, was Alan Thomas. And the winner started uh, Phoenix Rising at eight to one. Mike, talking about race commentators, one of Australia's best known, and uh, a man who was a humorist as far as race commentators uh, are concerned, was uh, the great Bert Bryant. Now, Bertie is in the Alfred Hospital in Melbourne. He underwent surgery this week. He's been a pretty sick boy, but he's a great little fighter, Bertie Bryant. Uh, his wife, Molly, tells me that he's getting on top of it rapidly, and I'll bet he's perched up in bed right now watching this program on uh, his television set. Bertie, all the best we're thinking of you. Well, I hope he's, uh, we've cheered him up because he certainly cheered us up. He's the only fellow... I mean, he could make you feel happy when you're back to loser, couldn't he? Though? That was his whole Give philosophy, you to take the pain out of losing your money. <laughs> All right, stay with us. In a moment, we're going to take you around the country for yesterday's big football.